So uh, what, I, what I want to do is to first thank uh, Cornelius and the members of the board and the membership and the friends of the Federation of Southern Cooperatives. Thank them for inviting me. I really think that this is a momentous occasion. In fact, I think it's more than a momentous occasion. I think it's a miraculous occasion. Mm -hmm. For the Federation to have lived for 50 years. You know? Think about that. Think about that and think about the things that were happening in our communities during that 50 years. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are 50 years old now, some of you are, most of you are young. Uh, but, you know, some of us are 50 plus years and we know about those things. But even the young folks have read about these things that were happening in, uh, during the course of those 50 years. One thing I want to say to preface my comments, and um, I was looking for Wendy before I got up here to ask his permission to uh, quote something from the Bible. And, uh, and I wanted to impress him that <laughs> some of us Catholics do read the Bible. <laughs> but seriously speaking, I want to quote something from, from Romans 28, uh, uh, 8 verses uh, 28, chapter 8 verses 28, because that's been part of my guiding principle, or one of my guiding principles that, uh, that carried me through these 60, 76 years that I've been alive. And it reads, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. And I think, you know, that says it all for me and my belief in how our struggle has proceeded. It was always with that in mind, you know, and, and, and God was always with us as we struggle and as we struggle to, and made progress and whatnot during the course of our life to uh, 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 extricate ourselves from the bonds of slavery and Jim Crowism, et cetera, et cetera. All I want to do today is to say a few things of encouragement to you, give you a little bit of, of uh, the history of uh, the, the Federation and, uh, and urge you to um, continue to the struggle. <clears throat> First, let me say, you know, like it's important to know, it's important to know the environment in which you're working and the continuity of the effort to uh, be human beings in this society, and not in, on the human society. We need to know the signs of the times uh, here in the United States and all, and also internationally. International, there are a lot of things happening 50 years ago. I mean, a lot of things happening internationally. You know, uh, colonialism was coming to a close. People in Africa and Asia were fighting and gaining their independence. Russia and the United States are the West and the East, are the, the West, the Western countries and the Soviet Union were fighting for uh, positioning themselves in those former colonies and gaining friends and whatnot. Then in the United States, you had all of this culminating of uh, efforts that had been going on for over 300 years. You know, the fight for civil rights and equal rights and voting rights and whatnot. And that was being put on in, in the international screen. And you know, it messed up that relationship or the efforts on the part of the United States to compete for relationships in African countries and Asian countries. They were losing that struggle. <laughs> and so something had to be done. Now, also nation and nationally, we had these uh, giants of the civil rights movement and organization moving together, sometimes separately, to fight for our rights. And we see the culminating, F, uh, 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 the culminating events of that struggle. You know, the integration of the of, uh, of graduate schools, especially in the area of law, uh, the integration of the Brown versus Board of Directors the decision. We see the Voting Rights, the Civil Rights Act, and the Voting Rights Act come into play. Those big things just were, were events, uh, occurrences of the moment 
these things have been put into place and being pushed for, you know, for generations. But it was like a culminating effect uh, uh, of those events that really um, impressed me and impressed so many young folks, too. Some of us, uh, towards the middle and end of the, uh, the 60s, many of the groups were moving in the area of economic development. And uh, what attracted them was the cooperative uh, model, which seemed relevant to them because all through the life of African Americans and poor people, they had to depend upon each other to uh, survive. Slaves had to do it. People during the Jim Crow era had to do it, both black and white. And so, you know, that, 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 uh, that model became very relevant. And, and, and a number of groups um, proceeded to learn as much as they could about the um, cooperative movement. Carroll was sent, and from Louisiana, we had started in, in, in the late 50s, early, early 60s, to, to study more about cooperative economics. As I was going to say, <coughs> Carol went to uh, Nova Scotia at Cody Institute, I think, to study there. Uh, we sent uh, we sent a young man to work in a cooperative uh, supermarket in uh, New Hampshire. I was sent first to plus um, a summer program for credit union uh, to, uh, to, credit, to learn credit union principles, and I also had the opportunity to go to um, that same co-op supermarket uh, one summer with my family and to be immersed in the management and the operation of a uh, 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 co-op supermarket. John and I went to uh, 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 Israel and uh, a couple of other folks along with Father McKnight. And, oh, you came here? Well, I'm sorry. So I was saying John and I and Father McKnight and a few other people went to, went to um, Israel. And we stayed there 10, 12 days to study the Kibbutz uh, uh, and Moshavim cooperative system and whatnot. So we were preparing ourselves to become more involved uh, in, uh, in, in cooperative economic activities in Louisiana. Well, while we were doing this, other folks were doing the same thing and running into the same kinds of problems, you know. Uh, they needed assistance. They needed all kinds of assistance, you know. They needed, uh, they needed to uh, uh, technical assistance and training, and uh, they needed um, a financial assistance, too. Uh, they needed capital. In those days, that was kind of like non-existence, you know, until some of the credit unions started in and started making up uh, uh, loans to uh, poor people. So I'm, I'm saying that even all of the major civil rights organizations, Poor and SNCC and SCLC, by the middle of uh, the 60s and uh, late 60s and whatnot, was moving in the direction of cooperative economic development. In fact, Dr. King was uh, uh, planning his Poor People uh, campaign. Uh, uh, in 1968, and uh, of course, in April, April 4th, I think it was, he was assassinated. And I think the People's <coughs> March was supposed to be the next month, but they had to postpone it for a while. In fact, I remember uh, the first time I met Dr. King in person, we were having a meeting in Choctaw, Alabama, with some farmers and some members of the uh, 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 Federation of Southern Cooperatives from that area. Uh, we received a call at one of the uh, of, uh, gentlemen's houses, and it was from Dr. King saying he wanted to talk to us. And um, Louis Black and I drove all night. <laughs> it was a Saturday night. We drove all night. We went to Greensboro to get some clothes for him, and then, then we came to, to Atlanta, and we met Dr. King uh, after his service that Sunday. And our conversation was, you know, uh, we're hearing, I'm hearing a lot about the Federation of Southern Cooperatives, and I think what y'all are doing makes sense. And I, I, and I think that in some of the places where you're working, we are also working. And um, 
you know, we need to we need to form a more uh, a, a better relation, not a better relationship, but a formal relationship, so we can uh, capitalize on our strengths. And that's it. That's exactly what we want. We had already been working with some folks in SCLC, but uh, but you know, uh, Dr. King wanted to formalize it, and of course. He was assassinated, and we couldn't make seemingly too much progress with SLC after that because that was that was a certain kind of a uh, problem internally there. Let me put it that way. So anyhow, you know, like uh, um, the point is, many of your groups, civil rights groups, was moving towards this last, perhaps. Uh, uh, objective, uh, uh, and that was uh, economic uh, development to, to uh, improve conditions of the poor. During that time, I think I read somewhere that over 50% of the people in rural America was poor or very poor. And so, you know, like something had to be done. So, you know, not only were we moving in that direction, but the uh, federal government was moving in that direction too because you know it was embarrassed by the number of studies that was out indicating the, uh, the level of poverty that we had in rural America. So you know uh, Lyndon Johnson came out with his war on poverty program, Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation all lined up behind uh, that uh, kind of initiative and whatnot. <laughs> In fact, we learned, you know, all the institutions, uh, all of those institutions work hand in glove, you know. But anyhow, you know, that th this combination of events uh, that were occurring during that time, uh, the advances that we were making and the changes in society that were occurring, all that created a fervor, I think, within the black community and the poor people's community. You know, that was, these were signs of hope. Plus, we were young, and we thought, you know, if we wanted to do good, God would help us. And so, you know, um, we jumped into it and said, we want to make a difference, and we want to be a part of that struggle over time, you know. And uh, so, you know, one thing led to another. Uh, Ford gave some money to, uh, our cooperative in Louisiana to do a, like a pilot project for a couple of years. In the meantime, uh, other groups were, um, were forming, as I said, and with the Southern Regional Council. And I also mentioned that there were a number of regional organizations, like the Southern Regional Council, the National Chapter Opus Fund, uh, American Friends Society, CLUSA, were also, you know, res trying to respond to requests for assistance from a number of groups. The Southern Regional Council collected and visited with groups in the Southeast and convened a meeting at um, Mount Beulah in Edwards, Mississippi, and a second meeting in Atlanta at, a, at a, a ITC, Interdenominational Theological Council or Center, excuse me on that. At that second meeting, uh, the 22 members who were there decided to um, create a regional service cooperative for the members, for the membership in in the states that, that we were charged that in the 14 states in the District of Columbia, I think it was. Um, and uh, we created a uh, organizational board. The board, uh, the, the, the board were, were, we selected one person from each cooperative, and that they organizing board. And that from there on, we got the assistance of a lawyer to help us draft the articles of incorporation and the bylaws. Submitted those and got chartered in the District of Columbia. And, and, and there was a person at one of our meetings who we were looking at to become the executive director, a 
of the Federation. And uh, uh, some time ago, talking to, uh, uh, what's his name, Mike O'Brien, Mike O'Brien, when he was preparing the souvenir book, I forgot about uh, Tom, uh, uh, Tom. But he, he agreed to be the executive director, and then something happened, he decided not to do it. And at that point, John Lewis and Ed Al Alma, an employee of the Southern Regional Council, was charged with the responsibility to go visit all the coordinators <coughs> and to find somebody to become the executive director. So they did that, and then uh, I guess, I guess a, a few weeks after their tour of the South, they landed at my house in Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs> to give me a report. Charles, we, uh, we couldn't find anybody to take this job. And I said, why do you think uh, no one wanted this job? Huh? He said, when we told him we didn't have any money, he couldn't pay them. <laughs> they said they didn't want to take the job, you know? So you're the chairman of the board, you gotta do something about that. And so, you know, foolish as I was, I decided to do it, and um, that's, you know, the rest. Um, so anyhow, you know, like, the struggle, of the, but we still had within the Federation of Southern Cooperatives that fervor of the those uh, original staff people and board members. I mean, we really thought we could change the world. And, you know, we've had all kinds of uh, challenges in the Federation of Southern Cooperatives, but you know, it has survived, and it has survived because I think we were on the right side. We wanted to do right towards people. You know, we wanted people to, to live fulfilled lives and to take care of those necessities that they had, family life. I mean, that's why we were created, to live fully, you know, the human estate. And so, you know, we struggled and we made some progress, and uh, you know, things changed politically, and you know, we had, <laughs> We had some new challenges. Things changed locally in, uh, in the state governments and in communities and whatnot. We had some setback. But you know, like, thank God we were able to uh, survive those things. Um, and uh, let's see what else I wanted to say. <laughs> I don't have any more jokes to tell you. <laughs> and and uh, I just want to be serious about this. I think, you know, like what the Federation has done over the last 25 years is significant. You know, I, 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 I go on the website and I read some of the things that uh, the, the organization is doing. I come here and I see, uh, uh, you know, folks like Monica talk, you know, and about, about the, uh, about the uh, progress of the Federation and the different programs. And the different programs the Federation is involved in. And that is amazing. That is amazing to me. In fact, just coming here today, me hearing the word federation, my heart's jump. My heart jumps every time I hear the word federation of Southern Cooperatives and whatnot. It took a lot of work, it took a, a lot of commitment, it took a, a lot of expertise and, um, and love. And, and, and you know, we had great people in the Federation of Southern Cooperatives, George and Alex Paris, you know, and um, John and Carol, and uh, I don't know who else is here from the Federation of Southern Cooperatives, but you know, we had people like Lewis Black. Lewis Black, you know, was a music teacher and his wife was also a teacher in uh, Greensboro. And um, he was fired from, they were both fired from their jobs because of their activities in the civil rights movement. And you know, he, um, he then he got a job with the Alabama Council on Human Relations and then he became part of the Federation of Southern Cooperatives. He was the one that uh, went to the aid of the of the people, the, P the Panola Land Buyers Association of organization, who had been kicked, the people had been kicked off their land for, for trying to vote, uh, registering to vote. They had nowhere else to go. And Lewis' efforts and whatnot, uh, 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 was the one who identified the possibility of getting this land here, the 1,300 plus acres of 
acres of land. He found a lawyer in Birmingham, Oscar Adams, to fight the case for us, and we won. And uh, we put together a, a, a group of people to help finance the land and um, started building three, we built three houses there, and John and them built the, um, the multifamily houses uh, uh, since then. So, you know, like, people like Lewis Black and Mrs. Black and Cunningham and, uh, mm -hmm. and Miles, um, Mr. Mr. Long, Mrs. and Mrs. Long, all of those people. One of the first, the, the members of the board were really good. I was probably, I think I was the youngest person on that, but you know, we had middle aged folks and elderly people. And you know, they brought together the wisdom and the experience, you know, that we needed to push forward. Our first casualty in the Federation was uh, James Johnson, who came from a, a co-op in um, Tennessee. And then after that, it was Dorothy. What is Dorothy? Is it, you remember Dorothy from uh, Greensboro? Yes. You, do you know it? Bell. She was the first staff person, I think. And since then, you know, we had a number of other people uh, to pass, and that's unfortunate. And board members. As I understand now, we only have two or three founding board members left. I know, uh, I know, uh, I'm one, <laughs> and I think I'm still alive. And uh, we have this guy in um, in Greensboro who was. Uh, we have a guy in Greensboro who's uh, uh, still alive. And I guess G.L. Twitty is still alive too, huh? <laughs> Twitty's probably, he's always old, older, he's probably in his 90s right now. But anyhow, you know, the Federation is necessary. The Federation can do the work that's required. It, it's mobilizing a staff to do that, a staff with know-how and, uh, and commitment and I think that's good, and it will survive. Uh, but I also want to say that, you know, I wore this shirt for a purpose. And some of you know the meaning of this Sankofa symbol. Yes. What does it mean? Go back to your roots. That's right, that's right. And it said, you know, and uh, another way to say it is like this, or I'll just tell you. It is not taboo to fetch what is at risk of being left behind. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just want to say that us old timers are not anachronisms. We're still alive, so there must be a reason for that. <laughs> so don't look at us as, 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 as anachronisms and whatnot. So, uh, and I think uh, Cornelius is wise beyond his age, and he understands that. And we'll see, you know, how uh, we proceed with this uh, understanding in the future, because I think the cooperative movement cooperative economic movement will become even more popular as it is, as it, people realize its value and uh, how it could benefit that group of people in our society that cannot be satisfied by the capitalist system. You know. There's never, you know, when you talk about full employment, you know, you still have, what, four or five percent of the people unemployed, and that's just those who have stopped. Uh, who, uh, who that doesn't, doesn't even include those that have stopped looking for work. So, you know, like it has failed us, and we need another alternative to satisfy our needs. So, it is, um, it is a necessary um, uh, organization or model to, to satisfy uh, people's needs. You know, joining together, pooling your resources is the most democratic of. It's more, much more democratic than the capitalist system. One member, one vote. Uh, the emphasis on investment, but more on participation and involvement in the uh, organization. That just makes a whole lot of sense. So, anyhow, how much more time I have? How much you want? He's <laughs> <laughs> trying to make me feel good. <laughs> I'm going to stop right here, you know, and say that it's really a pleasure to, uh, to see you here and to join you in this miraculous uh, uh, event, the 50th anniversary of an organization that's done its best to work for people and to enable people to live good lives. Thank you very much.